Hello YouTube, welcome to my 6th HTML tutorial. Now hopefully you just watched my 5th tutorial in which I was showing you um, the beginning of how to create forms in your website. Well the 6th tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create some better things to use in your website such as um, creating drop down menus where if you saw my example to choose let's say your gender, your birth date, things like that. So instead of opening up Notepad, what we do is you find your old icon. I actually should have probably shown you in my first tutorial, but I never thought about it for some reason. But let's say you wanted to continue editing your website. You just right click on it, click open with, then click Notepad. And then you have your coding up again which I'm sure a lot of you have probably figured out by now, but just for those of you who've been confused on that, that's how you do it. All right, actually, before I get to coding, I want to show you my, uh, what I have, what I'm going to, actually, what I'm going to be showing you how to do by bringing up my other example. So let me open that up real quick. Okay, so you should already have these sort of things right here, where you, these put in text and passwords listed with bullets or asterisks, depending on your operating system and what I'm going to be showing you now is drop down lists like this you can choose your gender birth date whatnot and also the submit button and reset button which resets things to the defaults and submit buttons which submits it to your SQL database but again SQL and ASP is for other tutorials and you have to wait on that but let's bring up our coding now and I'll show you how to do this stuff okay so if you're doing what I'm doing where you have your previous code you used you're gonna have to scroll down until you find where you made your last one in this case my password text box and create two line breaks which are basically like hitting the enter key when typing and this one we're going to actually do gender okay now these past ones I've been using the um, the tag input where you're inputting some value of text well this one is going to be select because well this is actually kinda logical and the other one you were inputting something this one you're selecting something and then also again we have to put the name we don't have to specify the type because there only is one type for select which is a drop down menu um, name what you want to come up as for what they select in here and in this case it's going to be obviously gender so let's end that tag okay so now is where you create the options for what they can select in here so we're going to make well actually the tag is just option you're specifying an option and now you have to use the attribute value with value, when it sends it to the database, it'll come up as gender equals and whatever's in your value. So let's make this first one male. Not that I'm sexist against females or anything, it's just what I use first. And then, what we met, I don't know if you remember or not, but when we made a picture, we made a link to it, we had the anchor and then hypertext reference and then we ended that but then we typed in text that you could click and then ended the anchor link well this is kind of what you're doing here this is this is not what's going to show up as one of the options unless you make this the same things which I'm going to and then you end option so basically whatever's in between these two things sorry these two angle brackets is what's going to be one of the options they can actually click so let's make a second option make the value obviously female type in female and then end option and then we have to end the select tag means to put a backslash, sorry about that. And let's save this and minimize it. And let's bring up our old, well not really old, but our previous icon. 
website. And here is our drop down list, male, female. Now there is one problem with this. Let's say someone accidentally, for who knows what reason, didn't see this and they accidentally skipped over it. And right here the default is male. What if they were female and accidentally click submit without changing that? You're going to think they are a male when in fact they are a female. So what you do is you need to create a default setting for this. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. Okay, so basically what you're doing is you're creating an entirely new option which is going to be the the default one value is going to be if you looked at my example I had this is gender colon and an the new tag we needed to make to make it the default pre-selected one is selected equals selected I'm not sure why you, there's two selecteds in this. I've never really looked much into it, but it works, so. And then, wh this is what you want to come up when you reset to defaults, or right when you open it up. So in this case, I'm just going to do this. And option. Let's save it, minimize, and refresh. And there we go. This is the predetermined um, default. And when you get to um, the reset button, when you hit reset, it's going to return from whatever you had selected back to gender, which is the default. Okay, so now let's make a place for a birth date. Okay, so with birth with a birth date, it's basically just creating more select tags and more options. So let's create a double line break. Okay, and let's put in birthday, this is what we want to come up before this, and then select, and also if you were um, watching, or if you, yeah, if you watched and saw my um, example of this, I had three select boxes actually, so we're going to have to make three of those, and so, oops, that does not go there, sorry about that, we need the name. This first one is going to be the month, so we're going to put birthday month. And option equal, no. Value equals this first month. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put the abbreviation for the months, just to make it faster. January this is the first one. Okay, so now I'm just I'm just gonna really quickly type all in all the months, and then I'll save it and show you. Okay, so now we've gotten the months done. So now all we need to do is create one for the days. And also do not put a, a double line breaker so you want everything to be on the same line. And this needs to be birthday day. So now I'm just filling in all the options for the days 1 through 31 which is the most you can have in a month so yeah. And now that we have that done, now we need to do one for the year. This needs to be a birthday year. So I'm going to do the years from 1995 to 2010. And my, my, my example had from 1990 to 2010, but I just need to save some time here. And also to save some time, right when I get done with this, I'm just going to show you how to do the submit and reset buttons because I'm really running out of time, so I'm just going to do that. So now I'm showing you how to make the buttons. Again, do a double line break. Okay, so here I'll just show you how to do it and I'll explain it when I'm done. Well, actually, this basically involves the input tag again, and the type is going to be either submit or reset for this, and the value, what you put in there, is what is going to be said on the actual button. So I'm going to save it, and then I can actually show you now. 
And I've refreshed it, and here is the birth date with all the months, days, years, submit, and we're set. So let's just randomly fill all this stuff in. And this would submit it, but I don't have a database connected to it. And then reset sets everything to the defaults. Maybe on the next tutorial, future tutorial, I may go into forms more into depth, but... But for now, this is all I can show you. So this is Bryce Fritzel, and this has been HTML Tutorial Part 6.